Indonesian victory stands as concrete and definite evidence that the fighting services of three great countries can be combined in effective operations. At every moment during this campaign, the devastating blows that were delivered by the Air Force, supported by the undersea and surface craft of the Navy, were so directed as to further and enhance the blows that were being delivered by the ground armies. As the campaign progressed, the supply of these troops by the enemy became more and more difficult. This was due to the power of the Air Force and the Navy. The efforts along this line were redoubled as each crisis of the battle approached. The land forces, of course, were vitally concerned with the amount of supply, the amount of reinforcements that were coming into the area each day. Their attacks were so timed, and the attacks of the air forces were so timed, that the maximum effect was produced upon the enemy at all times. General Eisenhower has mentioned the devastating attacks of our aircraft as one of the major factors in the Tunisian victory. Here are planes of the Northwest African Strategic Air Force and this is a brief record of the part played by certain groups in that Air Force. The 321st Bomb Group used native labor to help fill the tanks of its B-25s. The final phase of the campaign, with stepped-up operations, made increasing demands on supplies, personnel, and equipment. Successful operations depend first on good maintenance. The cooperation of every crew in this group starts right here on the ground. These planes have to be ready on time. That means plenty of pressure on the ground crews who repair and keep these ships in fighting trim. It means trained crews who know their jobs. It means extra hours of work, plenty of cooperation, good organization, teamwork. The armorers have already begun to clean and load the guns of the medium bombers. Ammunition is checked and fed into turret and waste guns. Our ordnance crew arrives and begins to bomb up the B-17s. field activity, the air crews, back at headquarters, are getting ready to be briefed on today's mission. The crews of the 321st Bomb Group answer briefing roll call by Captain Heinlein. Among those present were Lieutenants Bruce Stultz, Hamilton Brinkley, and Charles Failing. Captain Malcolm Haven briefs them on today's target. The target for this afternoon is Mature, the place that you so successfully bombed just three days ago. It's an easy target to find. It's a straight run on from Sukel Chemist, where you pick up your escort of P-40s. It's about 63 miles from this point here. You should have no trouble with heavy flat until you reach the target area of Mature itself. Colonel R.D. Knapp. Now, gentlemen, on bombing this uh, town of Mature that we uh, hit several days ago and hit fairly well, as you see from the uh, photographs of the town before and after dragging. It was very important to keep your tight formation. And any trouble you get into in this area is more apt to be from the enemy pursuit then from the ground flag. In another headquarters, Captain W.P. Saunders. Well, gentlemen, uh, 
This mission today is just a part of a well-organized plan to prevent a successful evacuation by the enemy. Our government is furnishing you about $10 million worth of equipment in order to do a good job. From all available information, we estimate that there are about 50 enemy aircraft, mostly ME-109s, on this airdrome. In addition to 35 transports, largely JU-52s. Now these transports are at the present time furnishing a large part of the enemy's supplies. And in addition, of course, will be used in any evacuation move. Now, your job today is to see that these particular transports are not available tomorrow. Colonel Donovan. Uh, this is a 101 <coughs> raid for the 97th today, and let's make this second hundred as destructive as we've made the first hundred. Now, we've got these bastards on the run here. Let's keep them on the run. And let's mow down all the air power that they have. Tick time tick now. Coming up on 10-16. 15 seconds to go. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one, hack. After briefing, the heavy bomb crews leave directly for the planes. About the same time, crews of the 321st medium bomb group start for their planes in jeeps. These medium bomb crews will attack their target, Mature, while the B-17s head for City Ahmed Air Base. The truck from 97th Group Headquarters arrives and drops the crews off along the line of B-17s. already veterans in this campaign. At this time, the Northwest African Strategic Air Force was moving toward the big final push.
hits were scored on the airfield. City Army. Immediately after the mission, crews of the heavy bomb group arrived for interrogation. This crew had a very successful mission. Did any of you fellas get any today? No. I got one too. Good. That's well. That, that makes two for this crew. Well, Olson, let's let's hear your story. Oh, watch me. One oh nine spying around up there looking for an opening. Mostly what? One oh nine today? There was a couple of possibles today. Couple of and there's one field off at about a thousand yards out, a couple hundred feet above us. Come in at about 8 o'clock. You was high, I say? Yeah, about 200 feet high. We started closing in, and I tracked him for a few yards, and then we started shooting. How many rounds did you shoot into him? Oh, about, about 50 rounds. Of <clears throat> and then uh, yeah, he opened the up with his studies at about 800 yards. And about 600 yards, he started using his cannon. And our bullets up to then had been very effective, so he he peeled off over the top, it was about 200 feet. And I, the last burst I fired, where I clipped his tail off. Got his tail off? The last I seen him, he started down. Did anybody see this? Yeah, I seen it. What'd he do, a little low? I seen his damn tail blow off, and he went down the steep dive, and seen him crash and burst into flames. Well, there's no doubt about that one, isn't it? No, there's no doubt about that one. I won't be bothered with him anymore. Uh -huh. Now, Stel, you also got one, didn't you? Yes. This one here come in about uh, 4 o'clock high. What was it? Uh, Bob Wolf. Bob Wolf, that makes one of each. That's... Yes, this one come uh, about four o'clock high and he was coming in, he wanted to slide in on a tail, but he wanted to get in there a stable, uh, the hor stable horizontal <laughs> stabilizer. Yeah, the horizontal stabilizer and he got in there and uh, he wanted to get in on a tail, but he got over too far and... Slipped over? Yeah, he slipped over about 500 yards and I started shooting at him then. How, how close did he come to you? Well, he got about 200 yards within, within the guns, and then he went right straight down. And I called up the ball turret, man. How many rounds did you put into him? Oh, about 50, I think. Got 50 in him. The ball turret man saw him go down. Did you see him go down? Yeah, I, uh, after Shorty called me up, I followed him down with my ball turret, and I raked him. He wasn't spinning or anything. I thought he might be thinking coming up on our belly, so. You got a few shots in him, too? Right? I gave him a few good bursts, then he straight down to the dive, get the ground exploded. That was a damn good raid. One of the B-25 crews wasn't so fortunate. Well, boys, I understand that mature truck was pretty rugged. Uh, Lieutenant Bam, did you ever get to the target? We got to the target. You did? Uh, where was it that your engine was shot out, Lieutenant Holt? Two minutes to the Can you show me on this, uh, on this map here? Yes, sir. It's down here in this section, south of the oh, I see. Right about in here. Yes, sir. Sergeant Fort, how'd you get that crack on the nose? The landing on land isn't, or on the water isn't as smooth as on land. I think one of the ammunition cans caught me in the nose for the land. Joe, uh, tell me, where did you land on the beach? Uh, about five miles south of Cape Negro. Oh, that's, that's south of there. Oh, yes, sir. About how long were you all on the uh, life raft? Well, from the time we all got aboard, approximately three hours before we reached the beach. Sergeant Uzelfo, you're a gunner, aren't you? Yes, sir. What position? Surgeon, yes, sir. Did you have any trouble uh, getting out? No, sir, not too much. Where, where did you uh, get out? At, uh... Uh, sideways to the sideways window there if you got out. Went uh, those machine guns in your way? No, sir, we threw them overboard. If I need any more data or pinpoints, I'll uh, call on you, fellas, and uh, 
thanks a lot. I think that you've had all the tough luck that's coming to you, don't you? Yes, sir. The Battle of Tunisia is over. It was a hard fight, but it represented only the initial phase of this operation. It was a preliminary bout. The main event will be the all-out air operation against Germany and against Berlin itself. The jobs of the Northwest African Strategic Air Force were first to stop supplies of material and personnel getting into Tunisia and later to stop personnel from getting out. These jobs were accomplished by destroying both the supplies and the means of bringing supplies in. Harbors were attacked, marshalling yards, shipping, both naval and merchant, and the enemy air, both his offensive air force and his air transport. I want to take this occasion to congratulate and to thank the boys of the Northwest African Strategic Air Force for the job they have done. It's been outstanding. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to serve with them.